Good morning, everyone. Good morning, my people. Welcome back to our very channel. We have come again to tell you that um, nobody is relaxing concerning Namdekano, though it seems nothing is being done, or it's as if you are pouring water on a stone. Yet, yet, Nigeria will run herself a base because of this singular reason. Because how can you illegally detain someone? And then you are not arresting criminal. That means you're a terrorist country. It's unbecoming. You understand? So Bruce Fain, the international lawyer, of course, of Ayamaz uh, and Kano, has petitioned Nigeria again that they should be expelled from Commonwealth. He asked UN, EU, and AU to expel Nigeria from Commonwealth. And that is it. So let me read exactly what uh, Bruce Fain is telling the world power to do. Bruce Fain, international counsel to Mazen Namdekano, the detained leader of indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, has petitioned the United Nations, European Union, and the Commonwealth, and the African Union, seeking the suspension and expulsion of Nigeria from the Committee of the Civilized Nations. Bruce Fain, in a petition to the world leaders, alleged that Nigeria is an outlawed nation and a threat to international peace and security, saying no country in the world is safe from Nigerians' trademark lawlessness, citing several violations of international law, including the hanging of King Sarawiwa, among alleged brazen disregard of rule of law as sanctioned by the civilized societies. The Council pointed out that Nigerian constitution lack basic ingredients of civil engagement have been drafted in the secrecy by a military dictator and never approved by the Nigerian people. Fen, who decried the continued detention of his clients despite clear violations of fundamental human rights, was particularly act that the Supreme Court of Nigeria endorsed Nambekano's trial, even as it agreed that the criminal prosecution was born out of the kidnapping and extraordinary rendition of Kano from Kenya. The petition titled Nigeria's Incorrigible Lawlessness, Suspension and Expulsion from International Bodies. Bruce Fain, a U.S.-based international lawyer, wrote, I am writing as international counsel for Mazin Nambekano, he is currently arbitrarily detained in Nigerian dungeon in precarious health and uh, denied access to necessary medical care. The United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention declared on July 20, 2022 that Mr. Kano's detention was in violation of 16. The United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention declared on July 20th, 2022, that Mr. Kano's detention was in violation of 16 international human rights covenants. It orders his immediate and unconditional release and uh, repatriation. Nigeria has snared at, at and disrespected the working group's order for more than 18 months. On October 1st, 2020, Five United Nations human rights experts lettered Nigerian President Muhammadu Buhari protesting the summary listing of indigenous people of Biafra IPOB as a terrorist organization. Its consensus leader is Mr. Kanu. President Buhari was called on to reconsider the listing in part because peaceful advocacy for an independent Biafra is protected speech under international law. President Buhari ignored the letter, Nigeria uniquely in the world, has banned IPOP as a terrorist organization despite its furious lobbying. On November 10, 1995, Nigeria hung Nobel Prize nominee King Sarawiwa despite pleas from multiple foreign governments and human rights groups. The current Nigerian constitution was drafted in secrecy by a military dictator and has never been approved by the people of Nigeria in a referendum or otherwise. It commands no legal standing.
Nigeria has never prosecuted any person for murdering a Biafran during its 64 years of existence since independence in 1916. In the eyes of Nigeria, Biafrans are subhuman who may be killed or plundered with impunity. Nigeria internationally starved millions of civilians during the 1967 to 1970 Biafran Civil War, a war crime. On December 15, 2023, the Supreme Court of Nigeria gave the green light to the prosecution of evident free charges against Mr. Kano, despite acknowledging that the criminal case born of Nigerians kidnapping and extraordinary rendition of the defendant from Kenya in June 2021. In violation of Jus Cogens, principles of uh, international law, and the Nigerian government's attempted assassination of Mr. Kano in September 2020, 2017, the Supreme Court of Nigeria held that the Nigerian government's criminality can operate as a profit center or mafia without interference by Nigerian courts, and that Nigeria can kidnap and subject to extraordinary rendition any person in any country in the world without worrying about criminal prosecution in Nigerian courts. No country in the world is safe from Nigerians' trademark lawlessness. It is a threat to international peace and security under the United Nations Charter by any yardstick. No Nigerian official has been either arrested or charged for Nigerian crime against Mr. Kano. None ever will absent international sanctions. Wake up, Nigeria is an outlaw nation. I note that the United Nations suspended South Africa for its policy of apartheid in 1974. The African Union suspended Sudan in 2021 over military coup. The Commonwealth suspended Nigeria in 1995 over the hanging of Sarawiwa. The letter was directed to Antonio Guterres, Secretary General, United Nations, Osla Gertrude, von der Leyen, President, European Commission, King Charles II, Head of the Commonwealth, and uh, Azoli Asomai, the Chairperson, African Union. Okay, he copied to those people. Yes, that's a very, very clear notion. But if the world thinks that, well, it is Nigerians that Nigeria can deal with, well, what goes around comes around because any person in the world is not safe in Nigerian hand because they can actually kidnap you from anywhere and then put you in dungeon. And hence, the whole world did not go for Kano's release. They should not come for anybody's release if Nigeria ventures to lay hand on you anywhere in the world. That's how they reason. You know, we call them at Lord Country, we call it a criminal nation. We have reasons, evidence everywhere. It is not something you can hide anymore. The Nigeria is lawless. Because of what? Because officially Nigeria has been listed as an Islamic nation. Of course, that's how they do. Lawlessness. And they call it taqwa. When they call it taqwa, they can do anything. They can lie anyhow and then just to have their way. And that's how Nigeria is being ruled. The leaders don't care about the masses, they don't care about justice, they don't care about judiciary, they don't give any damn to any sector in this country. And that's how Nigeria is. So it's a threat to world peace, it's a threat to world unity, and it's a threat to world judiciary and justice. I tell you the truth. Bruce Fenn, who wrote this, knows what he has, he has seen. Ever since Kano was going to court, they never allowed Brufain to enter the premises of the court. He comes from U.S. to Abuja to be able to stand to defend his client, but they never allowed him to enter the court because they don't want him to see what is going on. Lawlessness, the height of lawlessness. Nigeria is a scam. We told you, continue to believe in Nigeria to your own peril because it will get back to you. Don't allow Nigeria to happen to you. We tell everybody, do not allow Nigeria to happen to you because if it happens to you, nobody will save you. And that is it. So help us to share, like, and, uh, you know, subscribe to this very channel. God bless you all.